Hello and welcome once again to Views and Expectation. This is Dr. Bain, your host for the evening. And uh, as usual, I am just, I feel blessed to know that you allow me to come into your living rooms, to come into your home and to uh, speak with you and your family on topics that I believe are very important to community building topics that are very important to raising the consciousness of a community, of an entire community. And um, this evening in, in the studio I have with me our guest Rosemary Booth. Just say hi Rosemary. Hello. And you'll hear from her, you'll hear some more about who she is and uh, you know, the wealth of information that she brings this evening and, the, uh, and what she is seeking from a community or from her experiences in life that she's going to share with us. Uh, but before we go there, I, this, this month is a month in which many things are being celebrated. If I look in at the church, this is around the world pastoral appreciation month. And this is views and expectations. And of course, we have a view, many views, and we certainly have expectations uh, that we even hold ourselves to. One of the things that I expect, my view of the pulpit because it is pastoral appreciation, is that it, it should be pure, it should be relevant, there should be integrity in the pulpit, uh, there should be um, appropriate uh, processes that come from the pulpit, uh, there should be holiness, and most of all, there should be a right representation of the word of God. And so that being said, my expectation is that those who stand and call themselves pastors, I am a minister as well, those of them that, those, those that call themselves pastors, I have an expectation that they will uphold all that I have mentioned and even more. And therefore, for those who are doing that, I say, um, I, I wish you um, a successful, a blessed uh, pastoral appreciation month, and I pray that your congregations whom you're serving as their shepherds uh, would recognize the work that you're doing and applaud you according to the work that you do, the excellence with which you do it. I pray that the uh, recognition is appropriate to the work that you, that you do and that you are encouraged and not walk away from the pulpit as so many that get so despondent uh, tend to do. It's also, um, you notice we are wearing pink tonight in the studio. It is um, Breast Cancer Month. And uh, in honor of that, I want to uh, begin to stir uh, your thoughts in that area uh, with regards to breast cancer. Um, for all of this month, while we are here, we are going to mention it. And we are going to have a special, very special guest in, and you'll hear more about her next week. But you need to begin to tell those of you who, who have had family men, members with breast cancer, those of you, you who are breast cancer survivors, those of you who are right now uh, suffering with breast cancer, you would want to tune in and watch this program. So on the 27th of this month, two Thursdays from now, we're going to have a very special guest. And we'll tell you more about her next week. But we just want to encourage those of you who uh, have breast cancer, who have had breast cancer, uh, to, to continue to have faith and to pray and to trust God and to be at peace with yourself uh, in, in that very, very difficult situation. I am, you know, when we have breast cancer survivors, we also have the family of those who have had breast cancer. I had a sister who had breast cancer and she is a survivor. I have a sister-in-law who survived beat breast cancer twice and, um, and she is at, um, she's past her 70s, and so she's doing well, uh, and I just, you know, in honor of them, I want to just uh, encourage you that if you have family members with breast cancer, this is a time to encourage them, this is a time to spend time with them, and this is a time to find out what you can do as a community, wherever you are around the world, uh, to remember that you can do something to, contrib to contribute to uh, breast cancer research. Uh, you're looking in at um, views and expectations. This is RHR TV One. We want you to call. We are going to be discussing tonight. We know that there has to be someone out there that would be uh, motivated and encouraged to make a phone call tonight, either with information, to ask a question, to share, or to encourage uh, on this topic that we'll be discussing tonight. The phone number is 954 251 
783 and when we come back we will be looking at legal literacy home invasion so that's part one views and expectations on RHR TV one we'll be right a ministry of Grace United Community Church. The Learning Center is a privately owned organization providing exceptional child care and educational services to infants and preschool age children. The center also provides after school care for children up to age 10. The Learning Center utilizes a combination of structured curriculum instruction, teacher directed activities, and child initiated play to promote the physical, social, emotional, and intellectual development of each child. Come experience an environment of exploration, discovery, and exciting challenges. Grace United Learning Center, achieving excellence together. We are located at 911 Northwest 183rd Street, Miami Gardens, Florida. Our hours of operation, 6.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. Monday through Fridays. We can be contacted at 305-651-1947 or on the web at www.graceunitedlearning.com. Welcome back. Uh, in the studio, uh, I introduced you earlier to Rosemary Booth. Um, Rosemary Booth is a single parent, mother of two children, uh, one boy and one girl. And we are here tonight to speak about legal literacy because we want you to be um, aware of what, the, how the judicial system works. We want you to understand the law to the extent that uh, we, we want to stimulate your interest in understanding the law because it's going to help you. It's going to help you with your children and teenagers. This is sure going to help you tonight. You have to, you know, I'm, I'm asking all of you, the parents that might be watching, we know we have a particular um, audience, uh, but get your children to sit. Take some time and get your children to sit and listen to our program tonight, Legal Literacy, Home Invasion. Um, Rosemary um, has a story to tell. Uh, it's, I would say, a very tragic story because, uh, you know, it's, it's going to blow your mind when you hear it because you're not going to imagine that anything can sound like this is. And it is just so real, it is so current. Um, when I actually met Rosemary uh, at um, an alumni event on the Labor Day weekend, and for some reason I felt led to share about the television a program about RHR TV. Uh, we were at a program, again, where we were reaching out to, to, um, to, to the youth. It was soccer, it was netball, it was a, fund, a fundraising event for, um, to assist with Crime Watch Jamaica, that is part of Crime Watch, the International Crime Watch program. And, um, and so at the end of the evening, as a matter of fact, we went back for an event uh, to receive a check because the... the, the, the the alumni team that she um, she represents, uh, St. Mary's, won the soccer segment of the tournament, and I went to receive the, the check, you know, the photo op for the check for, for the um, for netball, and we just got talking to find out that just a, this is almost just about 10, 10 days or a week. Yeah, that's but, Friday. Yeah, a week later, she called and she says, "I need a forum to share this story." And so it just it just fit right in to where we were going today. Some of the pieces that we thought would be here today are missing, but I'm saying that the way was clear for her to share this story. And so I'm going to let uh, Rosemary tell you what her story is. Go ahead, Rosemary. Just speak to me. Um, two, two and a half years ago, approximately, my son and three other young males, black males, went and did an home invasion. They got arrested. They were held in jail up until now. Um, they they were charged with four counts: uh, home invasion with a firearm or deadly weapon, kidnapping, aggravated assault, and battery. And there was a four, but that was dismissed. However, the one pled guilty. He was guilty on the mercy of the court. He was um, sentenced to 30 years in prison. 
my son who went to trial along with the third female. One of, one of the four got away. So my son went to trial. He was sentenced to 60 years. I want you to say that again and tell the people so that it's clear what you're saying. How many years was he sentenced to? My son was sentenced to 60 years. That is six, six zero. zero. He, um, he was... He was given 40 years on one count, 10 on one, and 10 on the third. Um, the other young male is still waiting to be sentenced. His sentence is the 25th of this month. Right now, I am reaching out to anyone. I need people to know what is happening in the judicial system for black males. Right now, it's it's not good. As a first-time offender, my son did what he did. Yes, he was wrong. Um, he deserved to serve time for what he did. But 60 years, that is a life sentence to me. And how old is your son right now? He's 20. When this happened, he was 17, almost 18 years old. And he spent two years in jail waiting to be tried. And this is the outcome. So you understand that, I mean, that, yeah, she just said 60 years old, 60, 60 years, uh, the, the 60 year sentence, which means that when he would, if he would have come out of, of prison, he would be an old man. Uh, we probably wouldn't even have cell phones anymore. It would be something else that we are using and functioning by. And, and, and so this is what has been given to a young man. The first thing that I want to say to y'all, young people, Teenagers, be careful of your age because you have to remember that when you cross the line into adulthood and sometimes uh, you're not even aware that, some, that the trial could come up before and but, you know, it, it, it drags on and then you're tried as an adult so they do not even have to address the issue of trying to, to, to charge a teenager as an adult. So what I want you to understand here, home invasion, it's a very, very difficult, very, very difficult um, thing, uh, uh, crime to get yourself involved with. So I'm going to just let you know what crime invasion, how it is defined. And so you would realize that there is a difference between home invasion and just straight or oh, um, a plane, um, just stealing something. Uh, let, let me just explain what it is. By definition, home invasion, which used to be referred to until a few years ago, used to be referred to as hot burglary. It's defined as the act of illegally burglaring or entering into a home. It says that that you um, that that is occupied. So once the home is occupied, and the purpose for which you go into the home is to commit a crime, whatever the crime may be. You may going, be going in simply to rob. You may be going in and the intention is to assault someone. But we usually don't just assault someone that we do not know for no reason. So you're going in to, and so the assault usually comes as a result of your attempt to commit one of the other crimes that, that would be listed. You may invade a home uh, just to kill someone. But it, 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 it's, not, it's not, if it's someone that you know and you're going with the intention to kill them, it has to be that you do not know. You cannot know the person that you're considered to have to, to be in, in whose home you're considered to be invading. Um, so any violation of the law, the, whether you know what the law is or you do not know what the law is, any violation of the law against the occupants of the home, that is what is considered home invasion. It's an unauthorized entrance. If the person did not let you into the house, if you forcefully let's say, put yourself into the house, um, it's home invasion. Um, the punishment, why you might find this, this, this sentence is so ridiculous, because the punishment for home invasion varies from state to state. The difficult part about it is that there is no federal law, general federal law, that is covering home invasion in the United States. Not all the states have statutes which really define what home invasion is. But um, Florida is one of the ones that do have um, a specific 